Welcome to MLC TV News R, reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the Confluence state of Nigeria. I am Joshua Adenoy. The headlines Vice President Osi Banjo charges traditional rulers to ensure adequate security. Governor Yahya Bello advises intending pilgrims to be good ambassadors. APC presidential candidate Tinibu's convoy attacked in Lagos, two injured. And CAF Award holds July 21st in Morocco. Now the news in detail. Vice President Yemi Osibanjo has charged traditional rulers to join hands with the state and federal government to ensure adequate security of lives and property of Nigerians. Osibanjo gave the charge in Ibadan at a program organized by a sociocultural group, Yoruba World Center, to celebrate Olubado of Ibado, Oba Olale Kobalogun's first 100 days on the stool. The vice president, who was represented by a legal luminary, Ni Akintola, said the charge became necessary for peace and tranquility to reign across the country. He said traditional rulers should also prioritize promotion of culture and tradition, saying these will enhance peaceful coexistence and encourage brotherhood. Osibanjo charged Yoruba people, whom he described as people of honor and integrity, not to give room to those who try to destabilize our brotherhood through the display of abnormal acts that is not who we are. He elogizes Obabalogun, saying, for many decades, the Olubado has shown to be a leader who deeply cared for the common man, for progress, and for the development of the nation. He charged Obabalogun as custodian of the ancient culture and tradition of Ibado to continue to embody the best value that the people of Ibadan holds. In his remark, Chairman of the occasion, Rashidi Ladoja, the author of Ibadan, commended organizers of the event for promoting Yoruba culture. Ladoja, who was represented by Chief Sarafidin Ali, congratulated Obabalogun on his 100 days as Olubado of Ibadan. Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello has charged the 2022 intending Muslim pilgrims to be good ambassadors of the state and ensure that their actions while on pilgrimage bring accolades to the confluent state. Governor Bello, who paid a visit to the Kogi State delegation at the permanent Hajj camp in Basan, Abuja, as part of the preparation for their departure to Saudi Arabia, urged them to ensure they render assistance to each other while they eschew love and togetherness. While addressing the 370 L pilgrims at the permanent Hajj camp in Abuja, he stressed the need for them to use their sojourn at the Holy Land to commit the country into the hands of Almighty God for intervention at such a critical period. The governor, while praying for their safe travels to and through the Holy Land, also asked that, as representatives from the state, prayers should also be offered for the continued peace, unity, and progress of Kogi State. The leadership of the Nigeria Union of Local Government Employees, Nolge, Edo State Chapter, has given the council administrator and management till the end of the month to pay arrears of check-up dues and other deduction from the workers' salary. The Nolge leadership said the workers would embark on strike if such demands were not met. The union in a statement by its state secretary, Olumu Iwakol, made available to journalists on Sunday said, and I quote, we have been constrained to declare an industrial dispute with local government councils who have defaulted or contravened the spirit of the agreement read at a tripartite meeting held as directed by the state governor with regards to the unpaid areas of deduction and other issues. In fragrant disobedience to the governor's directive and agreement read at the meeting, some local government council are still defaulting some others yet to comply. The Stand Up for Women Society, SWS, has called on women to stand firm with one another in love and unity to promote good governance, peaceful coexistence, and a better society. The founder and national president of SWS, Barrister Deborah Ijadele Adetona, made a call during the 2022 Three Days National Conference and Summit held in Lagos State. Our reporter has more. Women in their hundreds from across the 36 states, including MCT Nigeria, converged on the Pelican International Hotel 
lucky to celebrate their achievements and to brainstorm on issues that matter at balancing societal obligations with marital and parental responsibilities to building a progressive country where women are allowed to take their positions at the center stage where decisions are made. Barrister Deborah said once women come together as one, they will get it right. It's the law. Once we come together as one, we will get it right. But mind you, we are ready to cross each other's uh, toes and to, to offend each other. So please let's do this. The keynote speakers at the event, Professor Yemisi Adekpa Rusi, an activist, Aishat Yesufu, who joined via Zoom, advocate for women to begin to play active roles in their homes and politics. Professor Yemisi Adekpa Rusi urged women to always make themselves available for training and retraining if they must contribute positively to the nation's building. While a renowned activist, Aishad Yusufu, called on women to participate in governance and that women who stay behind and allowed others to make all decisions will not go anywhere. Yusufu said countries where women participate actively in governance are the ones doing well. So whatever we have been trained here is for us personally, even in your home, there are things you are learning. Perseverance, endurance, cooperation, unity, oneness, love. We need it. I want to encourage us to that this is a training ground. It's a training ground. Whatever party you go to anytime, you are being trained. You are being trained. Whatever we were told when we were growing up, it's time for us to put them aside and begin to participate in governance. Uh, Data has shown that countries where women actively participate in governance, those countries are the ones who are doing well. Staying behind and allow other people to make all the decisions for us is not going to take us anywhere. The era of HRB should be over. We should also see for our, our financial independence and I say to people, it's not to sit down and do the kind of competition that our, peer, our mothers did where they were competing and buying wrappers and, and all of that. We should also buy properties, we should also own land. When our husbands are giving their sons land, we too should have land and properties that we're going to give our daughters. On peacemaking and conflict prevention, Aisha said women have not played many roles and as such called on them to be focused on conflict management, its prevention and resolution which are peacemaking processes that will deliver peaceful coexistence in society. Aisha Joseph added that education should be made paramount, especially for the girl child. She encouraged women to go beyond singing and praising politicians to sit amongst decision makers where their voices will be heard. Another who spoke is the founder of the first All People's Home, Barista Hawa Umar Jibril. She called on Nigerians to support her advocacy for con a conducive environment for the elderly in the country, Nigeria. Some of them, they have to meet up with their bills. If 
any of your children works with the government uh, ministry or department or agency, you know that the salary is not just enough. And when salary is not enough, your prayer for them as a parent is for them to be able to take care of their own to be able to take care of their immediate family. And when you are aging, you know that you don't have the strength to work again. You can be minister, permanent secretary, president, but once you die aging, you the energy is not there. And whatever money you have saved, it's just a matter of time. The money does when you are sick. You are only rich when you are well. But when you are sick, you will see how poor you can become. One antibiotic you can come up to 500,000. The four questions that we're going to give our daughters. And we should ensure that education is made paramount, especially for children and for the girl child, uh, to, to, to get that education and be there. It's a political season once again. It should not be an issue of women leader. If they're giving you women leader, they will give you uh, the leadership of, of a party. If they are giving you tokenism, they will give you a right. And it's very important to go beyond the singing. We should go out of the singing and the dancing and the HIV era to the place where we are at the table where decisions are being made. If decisions about women are being made and women are not at the table, what normally happens is that those decisions are thrown away. They are she said times have changed and there is so much urbanization and migration that have been made people not to stay with the set of elderly and in most cases made them to end up living lonely life till death. Barisawa called on well-meaning Nigerians to support the old to live happily on earth to stop old age sickness and sudden death. To spice the event was a cocktail night, followed by dinner and award night that celebrated men and women who have, through their struggles, put smiles on less privileged faces with their empowerment programs. Amongst many that got awards for their exceptional performances and outstanding leadership styles in their various field of endeavors are Barista Kakashew Lawan, Barista Hawa Uma Jibrin, Dr. Tufam Oscar Ofuka, Pastor Dr. Daniel Kolawole Olukoya, all SWS Vice Presidents, Zona Coordinators, and five outstanding chairpersons across the states. <laughs> WS is an advocate for women's rights and total development, building confidence to qualify women to participate in public matters in the society and to project and plan for women's world in our society as active players in building enabling environment for all. It was first launched in Akure on the 19th of November, 2018. Ayomide Dada reporting for MLC TV News Lagos. We go on a short break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mr. President, I was once there as an opposition senator. There was never a time that we called the president at that time, who was a PDP president, an insult because this is our institution. And if we don't conduct ourselves with dignity and respect, nobody will respect us. The heads of security in Nigeria made several different explanations for killings of our citizens. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, I hereby forward for the, for the confirmation by the Senate the appointment of the underlisted nominees as national commissioners and resident electoral commissioner for the independent national electoral commission, INEC. Welcome back. On politics, convoy of the presidential candidate of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, Bola Tinubu, was attacked in Lagos State, southwest Nigeria. The incident occurred at Adeniji end of Isaleko after the ruling party standard bearer visited the Oba of Lagos on his return to his home state after emerging as the presidential candidate in the 2023 general election. Tinubu was heading to his Budilion Ikoi residence from the palace. The hoodlums threw stones and other dangerous weapons at the convoy as it drove from the palace. Some of them were wielding swords and cutlasses, smashing side glasses and front windscreen of vehicles that were attacked. Though Tinubu was not affected by the attack, the bus conveying journalists and the backup security on the convoy were the most affected. Two other journalists sustained injuries and are receiving medical attention. The former Lagos state governor arrived in Lagos on Sunday after the Ekiti state governorship election and was received at the presidential wing of Multala Mohammed International Airport in Ikeja, Lagos before proceeding to the palace of the Oba of Lagos. A civil society organization, Committee for the Protection of People's Mandate, CPPM, has congratulated and commended the good people of Ekiti State for the peaceful and orderly conduct of the 2022 Ekiti State gubernatorial election, which was held on Saturday, and produced the winner in the person of Biodun Abayomi Oyebanji of the All Progressives Congress. In a statement issued in Ado Ekiti, the Ekiti State Capital, by the executive chairman of the group, Nelson Ekujumi, the organization described the outcome of the election as a reflection of the will of the people of Ekiti State, which is loud and clear. According to CPPM, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, deserves a kudos for the excellent performance in the conduct of the election, which is a signpost of its preparedness for order of season election and the 2023 general election. The group noted that as at 9 a.m., INEC personnel and materials have arrived at almost 95% of the polling stations across the state and accreditation and voting commenced and there was negligible or no report of beavers machine malfunctioning from any of the polling station. It urged the electoral umpire to remain focused on conducting free, fair and credible elections. CPPM also congratulated the security agencies for a good job, commended the political parties and their agents at the polling stations, the media, local and international observers, as well as commended the voters for their impressive turnout, which was a testament of their resilience and doggedness in performing their civic responsibilities for a better equity state. The organization, however, noted with regret that it received reports of voters' inducement in some polling stations and condemns such act of electoral irresponsibility in totality. Just as it commended the security agencies for arresting some of the electoral offenders and promised to follow the matter in order to ensure that the cases are prosecuted to a logical conclusion. CPPM congratulated Abiodun Abayomi Oyebanji of the All Progressives Congress for his victory at the polls and urged him to be magnanimous in victory and see it as a victory for all, just as it admonished other candidates to be gallant in defeat and join hands with the winner in moving a kitty state forward to the benefit of humanity and to the glory of God.
on crime operatives of the national drug law enforcement agency ndlea have intercepted large consignment of metaphetamine locally referred to in nigeria as Mpurumiri, which was concealed in conflicts parks and body cream containers en route malaysia and australia at multala mohammed international airport ikeja lagos in a statement signed by the ndlea spokesman femi baba femi Two freight agents, Neji Anoma and Eto Banabas, involved in the bid to export the illicit drug, have been arrested. The nine parcels of methamphetamine, weighing 1.45 kg, were hidden in packs of conflicts we built to Malaysia through the narco export shed of the MMI. In the same vein, operatives of the Directorate of Operation and General Investigation of the agency attached to a Korea company have intercepted a kilogram of methamphetamine concealed in a body cream container heading to Australia. Now on sports, let's join Jonah Malik for our sports update. And on sports update, the Kwara State Judo Association, in conjunction with Association of Local Government of Nigeria, commenced a program tagged first edition of Interlocal Government Training Championship built for 16th to 30th June 2022. In an atmosphere filled with euphoria and excitement, as the novice athlete shows excitement, inquisitiveness, and urge to learn the game. The association, through her chairman, Damisa Sleiman, appreciated all donors who had contributed immensely to the success of starting the program. Further, in his appreciation remarks, recognized with gratitude the executive chairman and board members of the Sports Commission via support throughout time of touring the local government, the Nigerian Judo Federation president, companies, and individuals who contributed financially and morally to record the success. While they await more local government to join in the process of making the memorable first edition event, the association chairman stated that the door is open for individuals to join the process as ample opportunity for self-defense and complete physical therapy further. This year's edition of the prestigious award ceremony for African football, the CAF Award 2022, will hold on July 21st. 2022 in Morocco. The CAF Award will be held ahead of the final of Africans' flagship women's competition, Women's African Cup of Nations Morocco 2023, scheduled to take place from July 2nd to July 23rd. The event will also coincide with the two-year anniversary of the launch of the CAF Women's Football Strategy. In line with that, a new category, Interclub Women's Player of the Year, has been introduced following the successful rollout of the Total Energy Scarf Women's Champions League in November 2021. As in previous edition, there will be several categories to be presented in addition to the coveted prize. Player of the Year, Men and Women. Other categories include Interclub Player of the Year, Young Player of the Year, National Team of the Year, Coach of the Year, Club of the Year, and Goal of the Year. The winners will be decided by votes from captains and coaches of the members' association, selected journalists, CAF technical study group, and CAF legends. The period under review is from September 2021 until June 2022. Senegalese forward Sadio Mane and Nigeria's Assisat Oshola scooped the African Player of the Year Men and Women Award, respectively. And that's Sport Update on MFC TV News. I am Malik Jonah reporting. Back to Acasta for more stories. Thanks for the update, Jonah. And on entertainment news, Matthias Ayodeji Peter is standing by. On our entertainment news, a popular Hollywood actor, Moses Armstrong, has been arrested by the Aqua Ibon State Police Command for allegedly raping a 16-year-old girl. Emeka Rulas, the national president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, confirming Armstrong's arrest, stated that the case is a very serious one. 
Emeka Rola, the national president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, confirming Armstrong's arrest, stated that the case is a very serious one. He disclosed that the case is being handled by the Aqua Imbom's first lady, Mata Odom Emmanuel, through our family empowerment and youth reorientation path initiative. Rola said to get involved with a child as young as 16 years old is not something he or the association he represents stands for. He described the situation as a sad and embarrassing one, as it involves the members of the guild, but he has no further comment on the case. He also added that the association frowns at such a crime. Armstrong is currently the special assistant on agriculture to the Aquaibon State Governor, Odom Emmanuel. And that is all in entertainment news today. My name is Matthias Ayodeji Peter, reporting for MLC TV. Back to our caster for more stories. Thank you for the update, Matthias. And that's the size of our today's news package. Join us tomorrow at the same hour to watch our news as we give you updates on happenings within and across the globe. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Malakite TV. Like and follow our Facebook page, MLC TV. Instagram, MLC TV 2021. Twitter, at MLC TV 1. For your event, coverage, information, contribution, advert and sponsorship, Please call any of the numbers displayed on your screen. Join us on Friday and Saturday to watch our special programs. Friday, 9 p.m., Local Government and You. Saturday, 7 p.m., Family Affairs. 9 p.m., Political Arena and Women's World. Sunday, by 6 p.m. It's Malakite TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. I am Joshua Adenoy. Please continue to be your brother's keeper to build a united and peaceful society together. Good day and thanks for watching.